All right, hey YouTube. Uh, today we're gonna do the rear main seal, uh, oil pan gasket, and an oil change on a 96 Jeep Cherokee. Uh, this one's leaking pretty good. Um, started leaking after I cleaned it. I could take you under here and show you. So I cleaned it up real good when I did the transmission service. And you can see it's just leaking everywhere in here. Um, so I'm assuming what happened was um, the last person that did an oil change on this. Because it wasn't that long ago. You can see it's a pretty decent, decently new filter up there. Um, I'm assuming what happened was they put synthetic oil in it after it's been running conventional forever um, and that tends to um, break down all the grime and gunk in your engine which is great but it also breaks down all the grime and gunk that was sealing your oil pan uh, or around all your gaskets so I'm gonna be doing a video on it uh, couple things here so um, you can see a lot of these I think there's only two sizes of bolts uh, the corner bolts are usually bigger uh, but you can see there's like wire hanger studs uh, every so often through here so it's very it mine actually are all in the right spots which is nice so um, I'm gonna show you how I kind of manage go through and manage all the uh, where all the bolts go so it's a pretty cool little trick so yep stand by and I'll show you all the all the steps so you can do this yourself to save you a lot of money okay so tools you're gonna need uh, for this uh, you'll need a ratchet uh, extension pretty long extension um, with a 7 16 uh, deep well um, and a half inch deep well um, for the, just the two different size uh, screws. Uh, oh, you'll also need the drain pan uh, socket, uh, which I'm assuming is probably 5 8 I'll check it though. Um, and I think I'll probably need that for a couple of them. Uh, you'll need a, maybe might need a punch for your uh, rear main seal to punch it out of the upper housing there and something to hit it with. Uh, you'll need some cleaner um, and something to scrape the RTV off if they used it. Um, so I like to grab the the Felpro uh, set uh, specifically because it comes with these little studs that help putting the uh, pan up or keeping this up while you're trying to put the pan on. Um, installation tips here basically just says don't use RTV unless you're putting it like on the corners or whatever. Um, so anyway, um, so a little trick I like to do. Uh, when they give you cardboard with this kind of stuff, show you. I like to lay it out here and then I like to drill, especially because they're just going to be random, um, random studs, right, for different hangers and whatnot. So, what I'll do is I'll just go through and mark each of these holes and then I'll punch out these holes so I can. As I remove the bolts out of the pan, I can just put them back in here. That way I know where all my studs are versus where just the regular bolts are. So this is a nice little trick. And you don't have to do it in the exact shape. Uh, if you don't want to, you could just put them straight in a line, but I find this kinda eliminates any confusion that might happen later so there you go so all the bolts are marked on there um, and then I'll just like I said I'll go through and I'll punch out or uh, drill out each of those holes so when I pull the bolts out of the pan I can just install the new ones sorry install the the bolts into that cardboard so I know where they go and I don't have to play that guessing game later or have to take stuff in and out a bunch of times. I hate doing that. Uh, so yeah, I'll punch that out and then I'll set you up under the car and we'll begin. Uh, first step will be draining the oil, obviously. Um, and then while that's draining, I will start removing some bolts. Uh, I'll probably start it, break it with the ratchet and then I'll just shoot them off with either the air ratchet or um, a drill, so. Yep, stay tuned. 
Alright, so step one is going to be just draining the oil pan. Uh, mine's a 5 8 so you just need a 5 8 either ratchet or wrench. Wow, that's tight. Yikes. Oh. There's like some sort of weird sealant all over it too, it's kind of weird. going to be six quarts coming out here so it's probably going to be a pretty decent amount of pressure. Yeah you can see it's dripping all down my nice shiny new transmission pan too. Alright there we go. And so nothing crazy on there so I'll just let that sit. I don't know what all this is. I'll clean it up when it's off. It doesn't look like there's a crush washer. Oh yeah, there's, it's just stuck to the pan here. Alright, so let that drain and while it's draining I'm just going to go around and hit all of these bolts here. Um, it's not really any good place to set you up under here so um, I will give it a try. but don't know if that's gonna happen or not. All right, cool. So let that drain and then hit those bolts and I'll pick you up from there. Okay, so that was uh, probably more difficult than it needed to be. Um, the transmission lines, uh, wherever you have a hanger, you need to take those off because um, the transmission lines are going to get in the way of the actual pan coming out. You probably saw it on the hyperlapse. I don't know if it showed it super good, um, but I had to take my steering stabilizer off in the front, uh, which is a three-quarter nut. Um, so a couple extra things, you'll need a needle nose and a three quarter inch socket and the drain plug was a five eighths. So, um, and you'll need some way of lifting your vehicle from the frame so that you get more space or you have to take more stuff off. This is how I did it. Uh, super OSHA approved, but oh well. So we'll lower it back down here. There we go. I got all my bolts pushed back into there. I had a couple that were missing the actual whatever they were supposed to be holding, so probably it doesn't matter that much. There's only a couple that actually were holding anything. Um, here's the oil pan. Doesn't look too crummy in there. It's got some stuff, but I think it's just from lack of maintenance or something. I don't know. I'm gonna look at all the bearings in there and just see, but it doesn't look too terrible. Uh, so yeah, so next, you're going to have to take off your, uh, it's kind of a mess down here, I'll clean up before I continue. Um, so, there you go, it's the inside, 
Doesn't look terrible. I haven't seen anything that I'm too concerned about. It's pretty gummy in here though, which is not great, but that's okay. Um, so the cam up there looks, all the lobes look pretty decent. I don't see any big chunks taken out or anything. But anyway, to get your rear main seal, you gotta take this rear cap off of your crank. Oops, right here, this guy. Um, so and to get that off, you gotta get this guy off. So we'll have to take all these out. I forget, there's a certain year uh, and beyond where you don't have to do this. Or maybe it's prior to, I'm not sure. Not really sure if it's pre, I don't remember. Um, but yeah, the oil pickup doesn't look too terrible. I'll probably give this a little scrub, all the parts that I take off, I'll scrub them and get as much of the gunk off as I can. Um, but yeah, it's not too terrible difficult. Um, I'm not sure that this oil pan has ever been off before. Either that or someone chose to use the really difficult gasket. This one's like not even, I guess it's pre-molded, but it feels pretty old. I don't know what the stock one was that came on here, but I would hope that this has been done at some point. But there's no RTV at all on here, which kind of leads me to believe that it was a stock one because most people put some RTV at least. Um, so if this was the stock one, that's pretty cool. That means it lasted 200 and what, 245,000 miles or whatever. So it's not terrible. Um, but yeah, I don't have, it's got a little play right there. That's not great. There's a little rod knock there. I don't have any uh, real noises or anything while I'm driving though, so. Yeah, they're all got the same kind of play. Yeah, they all have a little play in them, but it's not too bad. It doesn't, doesn't make too many noises, so. Not very concerned about that. Yeah, that's kinda, that's a little wiggly. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see. I don't have any major issues yet though, so hopefully I don't have to pull this thing apart. It's also all the way down at the bottom of the stroke, so there's no pressure on it at all, so that could be what's doing that noise. But they shouldn't make... I guess that one's doing kind of the same thing, so I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, I'll take it apart and uh, clean it up, and then... Next thing I'll show you is getting the rear main seal out of there. So, alright. Alright, so I got that all cleaned up. That took a while, and a couple cans of brake clean, and a bunch of dish soap, but pretty clean. Uh, the goal is to not make such a mess putting it back on. Uh, that way I can actually see if it's leaking or not. Um, so I got that cleaned, um, I had to take those out of the cardboard because my dog ran by and knocked them all out. So um, I just separated them to small bolts, the four corner big bolts, which I'm missing one, I gotta find that, and then the ones with studs on them, so um, do that and then I'll get under there and take that windage tray off um, and then I'll pull my rear cap off my crank so I can get to rear main seal and then uh, I'll show you how to pull out a rear main seal and we'll continue. Okay, so once you get that off, um, you guys should wear safety glasses while you're doing this, by the way, because this stuff just drips everywhere. Um, so next, we're going to pull our rear uh, bearing cap off here. Uh, it's a pretty big uh, nut. Uh, it's probably, uh, I'm assuming, a three-quarter. Uh, you'll need a three-quarter deep socket here. Um, and then your rear main seal, you can see it was definitely this leaking. It's just everywhere here. 
Um, so we'll pull that guy off and that guy and that'll drop your bearing cap here. Uh, just be careful because there's a bearing in there um, and you don't want to drop it. Um, and then, so once we get that out, we'll uh, I'll bring it over to the workbench and I'll show you what that looks like and then I'll show you how to remove the rear main seal from the actual block here because it goes up and around your crank. Um, and then, so once I get that, uh, all we'll do is we'll go around and I'll clean up the whole surface around. Try to get to focus all the way around the block side here. Uh, we'll just get all that crud off and then I'll clean up the flywheel housing here. Um, and then reinstall our gasket and we should be good for a while. I'm kind of planning on doing a rebuild on this. I don't know if I'm just going to put new bearings and con rods and pistons in or if I'm gonna try to find a, a donor block and just start a whole nother episode of me rebuilding an engine. So we'll see how that goes. All right, here we go. Uh, that guy up there, sorry, there we go. See that orange there? That's your upper part of your rear main seal. The lower half is still in your rear cap. Sorry, I was looking at that wrong, but that's part of your crank. That's your rear main seal, um, so you're gonna take your your punch and you're gonna push it up and it'll come out around I'll try to set you up here uh, so you can see me do that uh, but you can see it's it's one piece and it goes up and around your crank so to get it back in you just start it and push it around uh, the orientation is important though um, so what I like to do is just make sure when you take it out it's you put it in the same way so this side's the easy side you just pop it out of there, and then obviously that goes aft. That goes to the back part of the uh, back side of the engine. Uh, sorry, that goes to the front part of the transmission, basically uh, as far back of the engine as possible. So it goes like this. And then you want to try not to touch any of the bearings with your hands, so it's gonna go like that, right? So that these seals line up with each other. So, and you can see there's like that, that ridge there, that edge in there that goes, so just make sure when you're installing these, you put them back exactly the same way. But you can see how good that bearing actually looks. There's no scoring or anything. And the crank looks good, so. Yep. So I will clean up a little bit and then install that guy and that guy and I'll set you up. All right, so I got my tools here. Um, let's see, I got just a punch and what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your punch and you're gonna put it on the orange part here and you're gonna punch it out of there um, and eventually you'll get enough wiggle room for it to kind of start rotating around it's really hard to do with the camera right here but I can I'll probably make it work and what I've done is I've just um, I brought my new seal over here so I don't have to stop rolling. I can just keep going with it here. So, and if you had a longer punch, it'd be better. In fact, I'll probably go snag one. But maybe I could use the hammer like this. So there's a piece of metal in there, so you're not going to bend anything in the rear main seal itself, anyway. Uh, what you don't want to do is you don't want to miss and score your crank or anything. So just take your time and be pretty nice, but at the same time, it's going to take a little effort. Definitely have a big enough hammer. Alright, so I think it started on that last hit there. Once you get it moving, it goes pretty nice. It's just getting that started is kind of a pain. I'm gonna go get a longer punch.
Alright, I'm back. Sorry about that. All right, let's try that again. A little extra length here. So you want to get it on the metal, like the metal of the seal. Okay, it started to move there. There we go. So you can see that it went up. Hopefully it's still in the camera and I didn't mess with it too much. Alright, cool. So it went up. Once you get it moving, you just push to the point where you can't push. You don't want again you don't want to score this. Because then you'll never get anything to seal. Um, so just push it as far as you can and then now we got all this exposed over here. So sometimes you'll be able to grab it with your finger and just pull it out. But sometimes they're real tight and you just got to finish that rotation with some needle nose, which I left over there. I'll be right back. So, got the needle nose, and then you just want to just take note of the orientation of the seal itself. I know it says it on the package, but if you just put it back the way it was, normally, you're okay. Alright. So. Cool. So this is how the seal came out. Just like that, with that ridge going forwards. So I'm going to grab my new seal, make sure it's the same one. So ridge going forwards, I'm just going to soak this and dip it in some oil real quick, some new oil. And then put it in there. Um, they have a little tool that comes with it. Um, I've never had good luck with it. All it is a little piece of plastic, but somehow you can bend it and make it go in there nice. But I find that if you just push hard enough and you put oil on it it'll go just fine so to do this you just start from one side it's got to be kind of uh, angled a little bit but once you get it going it should go just fine and again you want to make sure that that Ridge is here. You're putting it in the right orientation, right? So, bridge forward, yes. Man, this thing's dirty. You don't really want to. I'm gonna wipe that real quick. Sorry, I should have cleaned that before I started. I just don't want to run the risk of getting some of this junk in there. Just wipe it down. Cool.
Alright, so ridge forward. I'm gonna try that again. Okay. Maybe set it on and give it a good rotation here. I think I got it started. I just want to kind of push from the other side and it will scooch around there. Okay, it's starting to get tight. Okay, and just last chance, just verify. Ridge forward. Oops. Okay, and then I'll grab my punch and just punch the rest of the way here. Rip that way. There it is. Okay, and again, just make sure you're getting it on the uh, the metal part there. Um, and you just want to get it in until it's flush on both sides. Okay, went a little too far, so you just go back to the other side and kind of give it a tap. Okay. All right, so now we'll just cut. All right, so the new seal's in. Uh, I cleaned it up real good and then just reapplied some oil onto it. Um, the seal you can't really put in wrong because of this tag, or I think we call it a tang. Uh, there's a notch for the tang to sit in, so um, you can't really mess this one up. So um, we're going to reinstall it and then get so these two get torqued to um, 40, 70, and then 80, I believe is what it was. So I'll check one more time and I'll just. I'll let you know if that was right while I'm torquing it or not. But I believe it's a three-step process, 40, 70, 80. Okay, so once you've installed your uh, crank end cap back on here um, with your new seal in, uh, you're going to torque these to 40, and then 70, and then finally 80. Um, you're going to alternate while you do it. So let's see. Probably need an extension here. And it's a 13 sixteenths bolt. So I'll just do 40. Okay. 
And you want to make sure before you do this, everything's as clean as you want it. Because you don't want to have to do this again. So once I get this bearing covered here, I was going to go around and clean up the surface. And get maybe this bell housing clean here. I just didn't want to clean too much with exposed bearing. So, Alright, so 40... And then, um, so these girdle or, um, it's either girdle or uh, windage tray or whatever you want to call it, um, these are 35 foot pounds each. So I'll put those on uh, after I'm done cleaning, and then that'll be it. Um, and then I'll show you putting the gasket on next, probably be fine because that's going to take me a little bit. So, but yeah, these are 35 foot pounds. So, all right, so all those are torqued. Uh, I think there's 14 of them, 35 foot pounds. Um, and I've installed the little um, retaining studs for the Felpro gasket. Um, this is actually the reason that I go with them, is because they, they, uh, they give you these. Um, so that way you can, um, when you go to put your gasket up, um, all you have to do is slide it up and then you slide your pan onto that. It makes it super easy um, and then I'm just gonna put some sealant uh, in the corners here where that meets there and there and then where it meets the timing chain housing up there too but that's it that's all the sealant I'm gonna use so all right um, not really a lot to show on that um, I can show you no I gotta put the sealant on but yeah anyway that's these little studs are really nice and they have little screwdriver heads to take them out if they get stuck so it's really nice, uh, that's why I go with that brand, um, but yeah, should go back together pretty nicely. So, cool. So next thing you should see is pan will be on and tightened, and then I'll take my oil filter off and I'll do an oil change, well, an oil fill anyway. Alright. Alright, got it all buttoned back up, uh, put oil in it. Couldn't change the filter because I didn't have the right size uh, oil rinse for it. So, get one of those later. Uh, but yeah, it's running good. No, uh, no active leaks, which is good. Um, took a little bit to get everything back on there, but not too bad. So, burning off all the fingerprints here, so I don't see anything leaking yet, so that's good. But uh, I'll keep an eye on it for the next couple days here, um, and then after I get it, after I go through one good like heat cycle on it, I'll uh, go back under there and tighten everything up. It's just smoking because all the fingerprints on the exhaust. So, but yeah, it's got good oil pressure. So it's all good. Well. Uh, that's how you do your uh, your oil pan and your rear main seal. Um, it took a few extra tools that I didn't mention. Uh, you'll need a torque wrench, um, that three quarter socket. Uh, if you have one, this will make the day go way faster. Oops. So these are pretty nice. Um, and. I think that was it. I think I covered everything in the video, but took all day and made a huge mess. So just be prepared for that. But yeah, thanks for watching us.